Hello, everybody. Welcome to the lunch table. My name is Evan. Today, I'm here. I'm joined with Nick and Joel, and today we're going to be doing our mock draft 1.0. Um, the combine started today as we're recording this on Thursday. Actually, the combine is this week. Today was the defensive ends, linebackers, and defensive tackles. So we're in the draft mood. So we thought might as well do a mock draft. So. This one is going to be, um, it's going to be snake style. So you you all know how that works. And then um, this is going to be what we would do if we were the general managers of this of all the teams, not what they, not what we think they're going to do. But that can play into it as well. But yeah. But before we begin, make sure to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed. We're getting close to 100 subscribers, so get us to there. That would be much appreciated. And follow us on Instagram and TikTok at lunchtable.takes. And without further ado, Nick holds the number one overall pick for the Chicago Bears. Nick, you got the floor. Yeah, um, I had, when we did our mock draft last year, I also had the number one overall pick. and I took Bryce Young for the Panthers, which is what they ended up doing in real life. That was a miss. Um, I hope that this one will not be. I think that there's still, I think there's still like, a slight question on what the Bears will do at quarterback. Um, but I think the answer is very obvious. I think they move on from Justin Fields and they draft Caleb Williams at number one. Um, I think he is clearly the best quarterback in this class. He's one of the best QB prospects in recent memory. Um, he's got, he can just do things on the football field that not many quarterbacks that we've seen at this age can do. Um, I think he's a game changer. I think he's a guy that can turn this Bears franchise around if they develop him properly, which they have trouble doing. But if there's one guy that's going to hit in this class, it's going to be Caleb Williams. So I, that's a pretty easy selection for me. They need a franchise guy if they move on from Justin Fields, and I think Caleb Williams is him. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm i starting to think more and more. I I was optimistic a little bit that maybe they would – and try trading the one with um, Justin Fields keeping him. But I don't know. It just makes more and more sense as we go throughout heading him, him heading into his, uh, that potential fifth year option. And it just makes sense to go cheaper. Yeah. With um, the, the increased salary cap too, like you can get a quarterback on a rookie deal and spend all that extra cash on a exactly. in your team. Exactly. And we, it's and we no talked brainer. about that. We talked about that on the, NFC North uh, podcast where we broke it down each team. And that's part of the reason why some of the things that we did for the bears is what we did because of that cap um, situation taking place. Um, I do think Caleb Williams probably goes one, but I think at the top there's a one a and one B for me. And I think it's between Caleb Williams and Drake may. I, 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 and I, I could see either one going first, but if you take Caleb Williams out of this draft, it's it's no doubt in my mind, Drake May. Yeah, Drake May would be the number one quarterback in like ninety percent of other drafts. He would have been the number one last year. Yeah. Yeah. Which leads right into my pick where I am going to have the commanders take you. Um I think Drake May, like you both said, is one B in this draft. He would be number one if Caleb wasn't there. He's super big, 6'5", 220. He's got um, a great arm. He's not like the most mobile, but he can move when he needs to. Um, he does have some issues with um, decision-making, but he had a great year two years ago when he had Josh Downs and then his kind of the, the uh, weapons around him kind of decreased last year. Still had a great year, but not as good as the year prior. But I think he's he's been getting like pro comps to uh, Justin Herbert, which I think is pretty um, – I think they play very similar. They're both kind of that same weight. And, yeah, I think Drake May is a phenomenal player. And I think for Washington, I think he can help jumpstart that rebuild there with Dan Quinn. I think – I mean, you hit the nail on the head. There's <laughs> – there's, I think I think the big thing here is – one and two are pretty clear. Yeah. It's where, yeah. at number three, where the draft actually starts. Yeah. 
And I, I would even consider four at or four or five technically. Mm-hmm. Because whatever the Patriots do dictates what the Cardinals do. And in my case here, having three with the Patriots, I think it's they have a lot of needs. And Marvin Harrison is very tempting at this spot. But my thing is you have to address the elephant in the room, and that's quarterback. That's your first and foremost um, that way of going about things. And I think that's Jaden Daniels at three. You come in, you get the Heisman from last year, a dual threat guy that can do it both with his arm and with his legs. Um, starting a new regime um, with Bill Belichick gone, and you come in and take your quarterback and Jaden Daniels. Yeah, I like, I like Jaden Daniels. I think he's um, obviously he had a great year with the Heisman, and he's been getting a lot of a lot of hype recently. Um, it's like this sort of process is starting to heat up. Um, yeah, I think for the Patriots at three, I think quarterback is definitely a huge need. I think they can't run with Mac Jones next year. Um, and yeah, or Bailey Zappi, you can't have either of them. Yeah. So Nick, anything you'd like to add there? Um, no, nah, I think the Patriots will end up going with Jaden Daniels at three. Do we think there's any chance that they take Marv at three? I, I, I would. So. Like, well, they said they came out today and said their plan is to trade Mac Jones, draft a rookie, and sign a vet. Okay, so, so potentially go after a guy like a Mike Evans. Yeah. Well, they wanted to sign a vet quarterback. Oh, vet quarterback. I thought yeah, you meant so, vet receiver. Yeah, so they want to bring in a veteran quarterback to help mentor uh, the rookie okay. that they're going to be getting. But, yeah, so it looks like Mac's gone. More than likely, they're going to draft whichever court, best quarterback available there. It's, which is probably going to be a Drake May or Jaden Daniels. Yeah, and then sign somebody. So somebody that leaves the him. door open to go out and – sign a big name free agent wide receiver though too. Yeah. Sure. Which is something they desperately need. Yeah, they need Ooh. that badly as well. Yeah. In a Let's bad way. Back to back. back to back and this one is as clear as day, I feel, for anybody with a set of eyes. Um Marvin Harrison Jr. just fell into the uh Cardinals lap. If this, if you're Cardinals and you're sitting here at four, you are jumping for joy at this. The only thing that could really get in your way with this is if someone trades up in the top three to get a guy, or obviously the Patriots take him. But with what we just talked about, it seems pretty clear that the Cardinals are going to have, honestly, probably the best talent in this draft and Marvin Harrison Jr. fall right into their laps. I mean, Next yeah. Marvin Harrison Jr. jersey right now. I do, yeah. yeah. I wore it for this for this, um, for this, this um, episode. I mean, I think if there's a guy that is the closest to being a Hall of Famer from this class when it's all said and done, I would say it's Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, he's got all the measurables that you'd want in a receiver. He's the next Julio Jones, AJ Green, um, Jamar Chase, he's, where it's like this is a slam dunk. He's the next prospect. star of that Cardinals franchise yeah. at wide receiver after Larry Fitz. Yeah. The Cardinals will have a staple in their receiving core for the next decade plus. Um, yeah. And I think that uh, we've talked about it before. The sky's the limit for him. Like, he's got the frame, the footwork. <laughs> The, the dedication, his dad was a Hall of Fame receiver. Like, he's got all the tools at his disposal to be one of the greatest receivers of all time. Yeah. Um, it just is going to depend on whether he can put it all together or not at the NFL level. I think he's going to. I think we all think he's going to. He's too good of a player to not, but... Um, well, and, and think about that duo, Kyler Murray and Marvin Harrison yeah. Jr. If you're that Kyler a- Murray, you're loving. You are wanting to get reps with him immediately. Well, and the big thing was last year they they addressed offensive line with Paris Johnson, and then you and you trade they traded down and still got him, which helped out a ton. 
And that's a big piece that they needed. Offensive line was a big issue last year. But then you go into this year, obviously defense's needs, but when you get Marvin Harrison, like you're you're set for a good 10, 15 years. Like you both said, I mean, you're getting the second best player in the draft at four who very well could be the best player in the draft. Um, I think he's the safest pick. Like, I I think it's a very low chance he doesn't pan out in the NFL. Yeah. But I, I love him with Arizona. I feel like if he were to go to um, Washington or um, New England – I obviously Marvin Harrison is a is a freak. He's a beast. He would still do well, but I feel a lot more confident in him with stable quarterback play. And we know Kyler Murray is that when healthy. And he's, I mean, when he had D Hop, they were a really great duo. And Marvin Harrison is going to fit that role perfectly. And I, I love that pairing, like you both said, of Kyler Murray and Marvin Harrison. I think it's going to be super dangerous. And I'm. If that if that is the pick, which odds are it's looking like it's going to be, super excited for Marv and what that Cardinals offense could look like under John. All right, me at five. <clears throat> so the big needs that the Chargers need is they need offensive tackle, they need offensive line help, they need potentially an extra wide receiver because Keenan Allen and Mike Williams' contracts are due up this next year, plus Mike Williams is a super injury-prone, and Keenan Allen's uh, getting up there in age. And then they could also go the route that I'm going to have them going, and that's drafting Brock Bowers. Sorry, Nick. It is what it is. <laughs> Brock is an interesting... He's an interesting... Um, or I guess scouts really, or I guess draft professionals, have him going all over the place. People have him going top five. People have him going top ten. People have him going in the late teens. He could go anywhere. But my thought process here is what's been a staple on John, on Jim Harbaugh's offenses since he's been a head coach, and that's tight ends. Yeah. Uh, you think back in um, San Francisco, he had – Vernon Davis, and then at Michigan, just just this past year, uh, Colson Loveland, who had who was a phenomenal tight end, and he uses them a lot. And so I feel like he would he would just salivate at the chance to get a Brock Bowers, who is one a phenomenal blocker, two a great route runner, great good enough that more than likely he'll be playing in the slot most of the time. He could very well do that, and so. I think you have to think of this as you're not drafting a tight end, you're drafting a weapon. And that's what Brock Bowers is. Because the tight end, Mark, like the drafting a tight end early, we've seen in this past year or two, isn't the greatest move. You can get a lot better. You can get great tight ends in the later rounds. But I think Brock Bowers is, he's a generational tight end. I think he's an outstanding prospect. And I think him in, him on that offense with Jim Harbaugh, Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. I think that's a great offense, and I think that would just help out Justin Herbert's development so much more because um, we've seen he hasn't really had stable weapons for the majority of his career. And so I think getting Brock Bowers would be kind of a home run for them if he pans out the way people think he should. Yeah. I mean,. I, I sent you guys something the other day, and it just shows how much Brock Bowers is a generational talent. Um, it he his numbers at Georgia were unreal, and you get him alongside of a guy like Justin Herbert with a um, Harbaugh led off um, team. I think it's a home run pick, and I'm honestly. I'm interested to see where Brock Bowers goes because this is something like last year with Bijan Robinson where you didn't know what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm interested to see how that goes because it's uh, he 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 could compete. He's one of those guys in terms of talent that he's one of those top guys in the draft, and you could potentially get him as a unreal steal at a low pick, like 
let's say 15, 16 in that range. Yeah. For me, this is where I think the draft starts at, is at five. I think one through four. Yeah. So I think the draft really starts at five. I, I think the only, like we said, the only dent that could really like take place is if Marv, if Marv goes like three. Yeah. Instead of Jaden Daniels. But even that, I feel it doesn't really get started because then four, I think they still go wide receiver. But Wait, Nick. otherwise, Nick, go ahead. Yeah. Um, this is when I was doing a mock draft a couple nights ago, this is exactly how my first um, five picks went. Uh, and the question is, will I continue on the same track as I did when I did mine, and I'm going to. Um, I'm going to take Malik Neighbors <laughs> yeah, at six think, to the Giants. I, um, I think the big thing for uh, the Giants is receiver. Um, their O-line wasn't great, but the receiver class is so good that you've got to get an elite weapon for Daniel Jones. The Giants trust Daniel Jones um, to a point where they paid him 40 mil a year, um, so I think you're going to need to get a uh, weapon for Daniel Jones, and the question is whether it's Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze. I think Malik Neighbors is a higher ceiling, it's almost 1,600 yards at LSU this past year, 18 yards a catch, 14 touchdowns. Um, was the best receiver in college football, statistically. Um, great deep threat. He's incredibly quick. Um, I think that the Giants need a guy to take the top off of defenses and take the pressure off of Saquon in the backfield if they keep him and Daniel Jones at the quarterback. Um, and I think they start with Malik Neighbors. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes sense. It, it, they they failed to address wide receiver for the longest time. You can't run a team out. You can't expect a guy like Daniel Jones to be able to even come close to competing with the guys that you have. All, basically, three-quarters of the team being slot guys. You, I mean, you have Paris Campbell, uh, Sterling Shepard, who can barely stay healthy, and then you throw in Darius Slayton, and, yeah, well, you had Jaylen. Darren Waller, but what? Jalen Hyatt. Jalen Hyatt was a bright side, but there, there, there's not a whole lot to it. Wandale Robinson's there, too, but it, it's yeah. just, you need a guy, you need a clear-cut guy, and Malik Neighbors is that guy. Yeah. I agree with you, Nick. I think Malik Neighbors has more potential than Roma Dunze. Um, but like Roman Dunes is more of like an all around wide receiver. But Malik Neighbors, like you said, he's a guy that just takes the top off the defense. And we saw we saw that at LSU. I mean, he was phenomenal, obviously. But yeah, I really love Neighbors. I think with him, um, I think like you both of you said, they definitely need to up that wide receiver room. And if if they end up do if they end up losing Saquon and you don't address weapons, then that team is not leaving Just good non-existent on offense. Yeah, so I think drafting a weapon to help out Daniel Jones, if you truly think Daniel Jones is your guy, then I am all for it. Did you see that one, uh, uh, I forget who it was, saying that the Browns should tra- trade Deshaun Watson to uh, for Daniel Jones? For Daniel Jones. Jones? Yeah. It's like the dumbest you know. I, I saw that and I I giggled to say the least. I mean, it's yeah, that's dumb. I don't know why they would do that. <laughs> hey, still love the show. Gotta gotta love get up. Oh yeah. What are the Titans doing, Nick? Um, as much as I dislike the Titans, I think there is a very clear cut pick for them at number seven. Um, and that would be Joe Alt. Yeah. Um, I think sense. that the Titans, the Titans have already said that they're going to roll with Will Levis, which I think is fair. Um, yeah. Like he's had, he had half a season to prove himself um, and they need to address the offensive line and you've got your franchise guy and Joe Alt is just a mammoth of a man. You talk about a cornerstone on the offensive line. He is six foot eight, 320 pounds. That's your protector. That is a blindside blocker. That is a run support tackle. That is everything you need on the offensive line. That is a stalwart on that front for the next decade. Um, potential all-pro caliber tackle. Notre Dame produces offensive linemen like no nobody's business. Um, 
And I think that it will start a little bit of their offensive rebuild that they need to do. Um, Because if you don't have an offensive line, your quarterback is not going to do anything. So I think Joe Alt is a perfect fit for Tennessee at seven. I agree. I think Joe Alt is definitely the best tackle in this draft. I think he's a phenomenal player. And and you have to check your your quarterback. And if they think, well, that's just a guy, um, yeah, you got to do what you got to do to make sure that he stays healthy. I I'm, I agree too, and the only other tackle I would really consider here is Fashanu, but I, I I don't think you can go wrong with either of them. I think Joe Alt's a great pick. Great. All right, I'm at eight with the Falcons. Can I can I get, bring up a point here, Evan? Yep. This is a team I could definitely see trying to trade for Justin Fields. Yes, absolutely. I think that's where he's going to end up. I can and see if, if they don't end up getting fields, they very well could try to trade up into that top three as well to try to get a quarterback if teams are fielding offers. Yeah. <clears throat> Most definitely. But here at eight, I'm going to have them taking the first defensive guy in this draft, and that is Dallas Turner out of Alabama. Um, Turner, he tested today the combine, and he showed out. He ran a four four seven. He had a one point five four ten yard split. Had a forty inch vertical and a ten seven broad jump. And when you think of that. As a guy who's 6'2", 251, it's pretty absurd. That's a freak athlete. Um, yeah, dude is just a stud. Um, we saw he he showed flashes um, two years ago when he was kind of overshadowed by Will Anderson. And then obviously Will Anderson left and it was his time to shine. And he it's exactly what he did. And yeah, I think the... If the Falcons can't get a quarterback here, which it's not looking like they will, I think you need to work on that defensive line. And you got Grady Jarrett, who's going to be out of the league in the next two, year or two, and that's really the only relevant guy on that defensive line. Yeah. And so I think bringing in Dallas Turner, who obviously he's a freak athlete, he is um, quick. He has a ridiculously quick first step. Um, he he's can just really get to the quarterback uh, very well. He's been um, he's been comp to like a Montez Sweat. If you get a guy like Montez Sweat here at eight, I think that is <clears throat> a perfect pick for them. Yeah, I think he's the consensus um, edge one consensus best defensive player in this draft, and with all the intangibles that you brought up and just the simple fact he's a freak athlete, it make it makes sense. Um, now, I am interested to hear your guys' opinion on this. If they don't get fields, do you think they take a risk on J.J. McCarthy? I think it's too high. Yeah, I think, I think a top 10 pick for J.J. McCarthy is way, way too high. Um, I, I could think see it's them possible. trading down, yeah, they trying to get JJ McCarthy sometime later. But I think that waste not it's not a waste. Let me clarify: using a top ten pick on JJ McCarthy is a, not a great idea, in my opinion. I don't think he's worthy of a top ten pick at all. It's a big swing. You guys can hear my opinions on this at a later date. I, I think we've already you guys you guys may have heard my opinions on this already if you guys seen the fight. I don't know your opinion on this. Wait, wait I, when did you talk about it? Uh the NFC North. Uh, okay. Yeah, I haven't seen all what team was it? The Vikings. Okay, about the Vikings. Uh, yeah, that hasn't been posted at the time of this recording, so Yeah. Um It's it's the big what if with Kurt Kurt Cousins. I don't know. <clears throat> we'll see. Maybe we'll I'll talk about him here. 
can we'll, we'll talk about them here. Yeah, soon. Well, I know one spot where it's not going to take place, and that's with the Chicago Bears. There's two ways you could go with this one, in my opinion. You got your quarterback already. You could go edge. You got Jared Verse there, who's number two, no doubt about it. You could go with best corner available and Terry on Arnold, in my opinion. Or neither of those things are fun, though. Neither of those things are fun. So the fun thing, and what I would do if I was GM, you address your quarterback. You have DJ Moore there already. Why not give him that second option in Romo Dunze? If you start off the draft with those two, you've hit a home run with the draft already. A plus draft. That and I, that there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. You you just transform that offense on one night. Yeah, and there's, you've and got you just gotta a plug quarterback a couple holes and a wide receiver uh, for the future, for sure. And then you plug a couple holes here and there, and you're, you're, that offense is unreal. But I, I think it just makes sense, that spot. Yeah, I mean, you got DJ Moore, who is more of your kind of like raw technician kind of guy. And then you bring in Roma Dunze, who... Six three two zero one is best when um, as a jump ball type guy, um, but he's also has great speed, um, and he's kind of just a do it all wide receiver. A lot of people have him there at that wide receiver too. It's a debate between him and neighbors. So I think getting him at nine to pair with Caleb Williams, I think would be phenomenal, and I think that would just help out Caleb Williams even more, just giving him as many weapons as possible. I agree. So I, love that. I completely agree. Nick, anything? Um, I mean, yeah, when I did this mock draft a couple nights ago, I also had the Bears taking Roma Dunze at nine. Um, if he Just falls me. to Chicago after they draft Caleb Williams and they don't have to move at all, you are so happy if you're a Bears fan. Um, yeah. I mean, Roma, depending on how they tested the comp, depending, is he running at the combine or no? Yeah, um, pretty okay. sure he is. Yeah, he he's borderline wide receiver too in this draft class. Like it's between him and Malik Neighbors. Roma Dunze, oh, definitely. Um, no, no doubt about it, is more well rounded than Malik Neighbors is, which I think pairs with Caleb Williams even better because you've got a guy that you know is going to be an instant impact day one with a rookie quarterback and a guy that he can trust to make the plays that need to be made, um, and kind of grow along with. Caleb Williams as they hopefully turn this thing around. So I think Roman Dunze is an obvious choice here. Perfect. So you got a team you were high on going into the season. Yeah, so I, I was high on this team heading into the season. Um, Odunze would be a nice pick here if he were to be there. But there's just one guy that just makes too much sense to me. They need help at right tackle. And Fuaga is a plug-and-play right tackle. It just makes sense to me here. Um, I'm Similar to Nick, I've done drafts um, prep, uh, prepping for this, and I just continue to find myself taking him here because it just makes sense. They need help at the right tackle position. They've struggled at, with that over the past couple of years. <clears throat> And when you can get a guy like him at that spot, it just makes sense. Yeah, I think tackle is definitely in need. I think, yeah, I mean, the best two tackles remaining is um, Fuaga and Fushanu. And I think Fuaga might be more pro-ready day one than Fushanu is. Yep. And so I think that it's with a team like the Jets, who when all their guys are healthy, is a playoff team, getting a guy that can make an instant impact, I think is the right move. And just protect Aaron Rodgers. Make sure he stays upright. It yeah, makes... he's gonna need to because even if he comes back behind that offensive line next year, like he, it's not gonna be looking too great for him. Anyways, yeah. All right, I got the Vikings at eleven, right? Yep. All right. Well, if you, well, the video hasn't been put out yet, but once the video comes out, you'll you'll see who I'm picking, and that's gonna be Jared Verse of. Um, 
I don't Florida State because I think he's going to be a perfect replacement for Dan, for Daniel Hunter. Um, if he, Daniel Hunter's free agent, if they don't even bring it back, I think Jared Verse is a great plug and play guy right there at edge. Um, he's he very well could have been one of the the first um, edges taken last year, but decided to go back to school. I mean, six four two fifty one. Um, and he also tested today. I'm pretty sure he did pretty well. He did. Take a look at what at his stuff real quick. Um, it was over. But yeah, he had a, he ran a four five eight forty ten seven broad one point six ten yard split thirty five inch vertical. Um, I think he's a great player. He's he's a relentless worker. Um, he's always just, he's a knack for getting to the ball and you've seen he's, he's got everything you want in a defensive and he's twitchy. He's got a quick first step. Um, he gets low. I think he is a great player. And I think putting him on this Vikings team, which defense has been a struggle for them, I think would be a great deal. But in the Viking, if once the Vikings video comes out, which will probably be out tomorrow, uh, this is being recorded, um, we, me and Joel, discussed what we would do with or without Kirk Cousins. So that changes things if Kirk isn't there. But in this scenario, I have Kirk coming back and then drop him. But... And it, it just makes sense. You lose a guy like Daniel Hunter, you got to replace him right away. And bringing in a guy like Jared Verse can help with that on a big level. So it makes sense. All right, Nick, Broncos at 12. Yeah. Um, you sound excited for this one, Nick. Yeah, I hate that I'm about to do this. Um, but it's been clear that the Broncos are not bringing back Russell Wilson. Um, that's been clear yeah. as day. They're going to they're gonna cut him for, for cap reasons. Um, and I think the only quarterback remaining that's worthy of a first-round pick is J.J. McCarthy. So Agreed. I'm going to take JJ McCarthy at 12. Um, I'm not high on JJ McCarthy. Um, I'm I'm not going to get into it because it's not a JJ McCarthy film breakdown. Um, <laughs> but I will say that Sean Payton does know what he's doing with quarterbacks, and JJ McCarthy definitely has the build and the athleticism to be an to be a solid quarterback at the NFL level. Um. So I think if there is one guy that can get the best out of him that needs a quarterback and could take him, it is Sean Payton. Um, so I think he'll be put into a better position than he would if he went in the top six, like some guys are saying to the Giants. Um, that's insane to me that he's even being considered at that point. But I think that the Broncos' biggest need would be quarterback. Um, and I think J.J. McCarthy is the only quarterback left that is still worthy of a first-round selection. So I'm going to take him at 12 to the Broncos. I, I know, I know you said you weren't, you didn't want to go into this um, J.J. McCarthy breakdown. Um, and you said the the Vikings video will be out tomorrow. Before yeah. this, it should be. Okay, well, I'm just going to say it then. The Vi- I have the Vikings trading up to six to take J.J. McCarthy. That is a big swing. Oh, boy. So you don't have them coming back. You don't have them re-signing Kirk Cousins. That, that's if Kirk doesn't re-sign. Okay. That's, that's, the, that's what I meant. If okay. Kirk doesn't re-sign, that's what I could see happening. Okay. Yeah, if Kirk doesn't re-sign, then yeah, I could see happening. I thought you said that that's what you think they're going to oh, do. No, 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 I no. think they would be out of their mind to not re-sign Kirk Cousins and then trade up for J.J. McCarthy. That is crazy. Oh, no. No, no, no. It, that's That was my scenario if, they, if Kirk Cousins doesn't come back. Okay. And it's more of your – I feel he's one of those guys that has – there's potential for the upside to be there. Um He's got a talented arm, big playability. He's able to use his legs. Um, he, they, he was able to make big plays when he needed to. They didn't really need to use him. And one of the big things that NFL scouts and NFL teams love is a winning quarterback, and he's proven that he's a winning quarterback. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's gotten the job done. 
at the college level. Um, I feel like there's a larger um, ceiling. There's a large ceiling that can be there for yeah, him. Yeah, I think his he's he's raw. High. Don't get me. He's raw. Don't get me wrong. But I I feel there's a large ceiling. I think he's got a pretty hefty ceiling for um, one of the highest ceilings that could be there to get there in this draft. Yeah, I don't think he's like. I don't think his ceiling is like Gardner Minshew. Like his ceiling is a good quarterback at the NFL level. I just, oh yeah. I think there was a reason he wasn't asked to do much at Michigan. Um, but I, I mean, we'll see when he gets to the NFL. I, I, it's just, it's just one of those things. Like, is it the system that limits him, or it's one of those that it's along your the lines that you're saying right there? Is yeah. it the system or is it the player? And I'm going based off system. Yeah, he's a, he's kind of a tough one to evaluate because if you look on film, there's really not a whole lot that you see that you'd be like, this guy is for sure going to be like a great quarterback. But he does have throws where you where he where, that he makes where you're like, okay, like I I see where people where the hype is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, he's what 21 years old. Um, Young Buck. He's yeah, six three, one ninety six. He's got decent size. Um, he can. He's shown that he can run the ball, which is um good. But I mean, he still struggles sometimes with um his pocket awareness, his decision making, and like um stuff like that. So yeah, he's kind of an unknown, but. I think he definitely has the highest ceiling out of guys like Michael Penix and Bo Nix, the guys left available. Um, and I, I do think a team will take a swing on him in the top 15. And so I think for the Broncos, and, and make if odds are Russ isn't there, you got to get somebody in there. You can't be rolling out next year with what, Jared Stidham or something. <laughs> so Unless you're you just get actively somebody. tanking. Yeah, just like actively tanking for like Shador Sanders. Yeah. Or, or Quinn whoever. Ewers. Yeah. Or Quinn Ewers, yeah. So. Zach and I... I had it at 12. Zach and I had a heated debate the other day about that. So, if if McCarthy were Only, in next year's draft. If it was in next year's draft? Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll save that one for another time. Yeah. All right, Joel, you got 13 as well. No, this is Nick. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. yeah, I am. I, I'm looking at this pick. Um, one of the I think the one of the biggest needs for the Raiders outside of quarterback, um, which I think all of the ones that you would draft in the first round are now gone. Um, and I'm looking at the roster. I think their second biggest need is corner. Yeah. Um, they were seven. <laughs> they were seventeenth in pass defense last year, which isn't bad, but they're losing Rakusin in free agency. Um, so I'm taking a look at these corners, and I think Terry and Arnold is the best one. So I, I think this yeah. is where he goes, to to the Raiders. Um, I, th- this board's a little weird. Yeah, I think you can make an argument well, you for... You know, PFS boards are terrible. I think you can make an argument for three, maybe four corners here. Um, but I think Terry and Arnold has the highest upside. Um, and I think that he would be great with the Raiders. Um, so I think I'm just I'm gonna have them take him here at thirteen. It it, it makes yeah. sense. I like that's where it. I have him. That's where I have him too. It makes sense. Well, I've seen some people in recent mocks having them addressing interior defensive line, taking um, By- Jashawn Newton or Brian, Byron Murphy. But I like Terry and Hogg a lot. I mean, DB is definitely a huge thing for them. Definitely. Definitely. Right, Nick, I agree. It, it, 14. It, good pick. Go for it, Evan. Is it me? Yeah. Yeah, this is you. All right. Okay. Um, 14, we got the Saints. Um, Saints, I'm going to have them going Ulano Fashanu. Ulu Fashanu. If that Penn happens, State. that's a Great blessing. Thing. Yeah. But mainly the reason is because 
you got Ryan Ramshack on that. Who is he? Right, he's on the right side, right? Right. Uh, yes. Um, he's getting old. He's dealing with a lot of injuries. And then I don't even know who's on the left side. Trevor, is Trevor Penning still there? See their left tackle. Trevor Penning's there, but he hasn't panned out worth. Yeah. You know. Um, but I like Olu Fashanu. I think he he does have some things he has to work on, but. I think on tape he looks he looks great. Um, he really only struggled against Ohio State because JT Two and Melio just dominated him both years. But um, he's got great size, great length, great strength. Um, I think he's a great tackle prospect. And like Joel said, getting him at fourteen, I think is a great spot for him. Um, and yeah, I think it's a. I think he's going to bring stable protection to Derek Carr or whoever they go with if they move on from him eventually. But, yeah, I think he fits fits what they need. Yeah, I think but, I had them taking J.C. Latham at 14. Um, yeah, I think but, that was because I had Olu Fashanu off the board by this point. So I can see J.C. Latham getting drafted over Fashanu yeah. as well because he's phenomenal as well. Yeah. Very deep tackle class. Most definitely. It's Zach would be jumping for joy right now. Yeah. And there's no if ands or buts about that. But my up Yeah. Do we do we wanna defer this to uh Nick? Yeah, I was about to say, Joel, I have the Bengals pick at eighteen. That's fine. Um so do you just wanna like 18. yeah, do you just wanna like swap? I'll take eighteen. That's All fine. Right. Um so, I, knew, I know who I was gonna pay, take here, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is pretty similar to how my mock draft played out when I did a couple, a couple nights ago. Um, and I was looking at this board and I think like, obviously my dream scenario would be the Colts trading up to get Brock Bowers, but that's not happening here. (laughs) Um, so I think their second biggest need is corner as well. Um, their front seven was really good last year, especially at getting to the quarterback. Their secondary was atrocious. Their secondary, especially that back half of the year, got torched. Um, so I, I just, the corner class is very top heavy. Not top heavy, but there's a. I want to say that I mean there's a lot of guys that are like really good at corner. Um, yeah. But there's there's two that stand out to me. Um, the first one is Coop DeGene. Um, he I was watching film on him the other day. He is a dog. He can play slot corner. He can play uh, safety. He's a little bit small to play on the outside corner, but he can definitely get the job done. Um, I would be fantastic. I would be very happy if we drafted Cooper Jean at 15. Um, my thing is that we drafted Juju Brents last year, and Juju Brents was good. He was good. He was promising last year yeah. at corner at times. Um, so I don't think we need like a Swiss Army knife in the secondary. I think we just need a guy to play opposite of him or sometimes in the slot if he needs to be um, and kind of an athletic freak. And that guy is Quinion Mitchell at 18, at Ugh. 15. Um, I was also watching film on him the other day. This guy a is a monster He's a at corner. Um, and I know that Indianapolis loves their athletic, just behemoths. Of a man, um, he can fly all over the place. Um, and he was, they played Ohio State a couple years ago. He was matched up on Marvin Harrison Jr. And he played really good defense against yeah, Marvin Harrison I sent, Jr. I sent you that clip, man. Yeah, it was like perfect defense on the clip that Marvin Harrison Jr. caught the touchdown off, but he was all over him. Marvin Harrison Jr. had that do yeah. like a NFL style toe tap to even get his hands on the ball. Yeah, it, um, it was like great defense, but just better offense. Better offense. He's been skyrocketing up boards because of his athleticism. Um, I think he's great at route recognition. I think he's great um, off the point of attack. Um, and I know Indianapolis loves their athletic freak, so I think it's a match made in heaven for for these two teams. Um, and that's where I would have him at fifteen. I would prefer <laughs> Terry and Arnold, but he's gone. So it makes sense. It makes sense. The only other one I would consider there is Nate Wiggins. Yeah, I was thinking about Nate Wiggins too. 
Um, those, those would be the two I'd go. I like Quinn and Mitchell. And I think, like Nick said, they love those athletic freaks, and that's what Quinn and Mitchell is. Um, he had a great senior bowl. That's really why he's kind of propelled into the into this mid first. Um, and yeah, I think he, I think he's a great player. So I don't I, think I, like I don't him. think you can go wrong with him by any means. No. If if the Colts draft Wiggins, Mitchell, or Coop DeGene, yeah, I don't think you can really be too upset about it. Yeah. Or if Terry and Arnold falls to fifteen for whatever reason. Assuming I've they, seen Mox with him. I've seen happened? Mox with him yeah. there. Assuming so, they yeah. don't well. address corner in free agency, which they very well could because they have like seventy three mm-hmm. million dollars in gap space. Um, yeah. I think they, if they lose, if they lose um, Pittman, they could possibly look for receiver. Maybe potentially, it'd be a little bit of a reach. Potentially, Pittman's he, coming. Just got to hope for. They got to hope for one more thing though, too, to take place. Yeah. That they can. I say Pittman's working on extensions. Yeah, That's Chris point. Ballard came out and said that whether it be through the franchise tag or through an extension, he has full like yeah. confidence that he'll be able to keep uh, Michael Pittman in uh, Indianapolis. <laughs> That's a good thing for them. That's for sure. Back to me at 16. Joel has. Oh, right, because you guys switched. Um, I think this one, um, I think I'm going to go, in this case, a little best player available, in my opinion, and I'm going to go Byron Murphy. Um, Leonard Williams is a free agent this offseason, but even if you get him locked up on a long-term deal, you can have him alongside Byron Murphy. And that's it. You're looking more and more at a scary front seven with the um, Seahawks and honestly getting better and better defense overall as well. And when you've got a new coach in there, um, what better way to make your mark than building in the trent, uh, building in the trenches? Yeah, plus Mike McDonald is a defensive-minded head coach. Yeah, um, and yeah, I mean, Lyle Murphy tested today. He ran a four eight seven, had a one six nine ten yard split, thirty three inch vertical, nine three broad jump. So he all he did today was just help his case to solidify him as. A show first round out. pick and the first defensive tackle would be taken off the draft. So I, I really like Byron Murphy. I think he's great. Um, but I, I Nick, you, we s- talked about this pick the other day. Um, what else could you you, see? you had them going a different route. Yeah, you? I think that uh, their biggest need right now is interior offensive line. Um, their okay. offensive tackles are okay. I actually I think it's a little bit of a reach in hindsight, but I had them taking Jackson Powers Johnson. At yeah, I'd say that's right around the range. Yeah. I could see that. Um, I th- I thought he would be like a little bit later in the first round if I were to, like actually grade him on where he should fall. Um, but I think the Seahawks' biggest need right now is interior offensive line. Their tackles are okay, but their uh, in- interior on the offensive line was atrocious. Um, and I think Jackson Powers Johnson might be the be- if regardless of position you take positional value away, he might be the best just pure O lineman in the draft. I think it'd be either him or Joe Alt because he was a beast at Oregon. Yeah. Um, but I I had them going interior offensive line. I can see them going best player available. Um, I would have. I think there's one guy. If you talk about best player available, that's still here. I'm not going to say who it is, but how is he still on the board right now? I'm not going to say who it is, but okay. If I had that so pick, that I think I would have gone that round. Yeah, you have Jacksonville. Yeah. I have Jacksonville. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I think. So you know. huh, I think what? I know who my next pick is going to be. What does Jacksonville need? They need corner. They need edge. Corner. And they technical. also need interior offensive line. Yeah. Um, all right, well, in between two two guys, 
Um, I think for me, I'll go with Nate Wiggins from Clemson. That's who I had on taking. Yep. Yep. Um, That's a good one. Let me pull him up here real quick. Um, Freak. I mean, I feel like all these corners are just really great athletes. It seems to be a theme. Um, He's the tallest of the corners, yeah? 6'2"? Yes, he's 6'2", 170, so he's definitely an outside outside guy. But um, he's got great reaction speed, great route recognition. Like He's a, he's a bigger physical guy, so he could play on the outside, which I think. Um, which I think they need. Um, and yeah, I think... I, I I can have them. I could have them also going into your defensive line and and this mock getting maybe a Trishon, um Newton. But I mean, I'm going Nate Wiggins. Good old Nate Wiggins. I like it. I like that pick. It just makes sense. I, I've I mean, no, I've said that a lot, but it it makes sense. Um, so I'm on the clock now with the Bengals. Yes. I don't think they bring Jonah Williams back. Jonah Williams and people say, okay, you need to address it in the off season during free agency. But in all reality, if we're talking about right tackles, Jonah Williams is probably the best right tackle available. So I think you have to address it in the first round. Even though I'm just gonna say this right now, I prop I could see them not doing that at all. So, uh, and I could see them going a different route, going on defense again with a guy such as Chop Robinson. But at this spot, I think it's pretty clean cut. You go J.C. Latham, plug and play right tackle. Yeah, I mean, as a Bengals fan, I, this is what I would do. I think, I mean, offensive line has been an issue since Joe Burrow got drafted, and they've made improvements, don't get me wrong, but Jonah Williams, I don't think is very good, and I think the league's starting to figure that out. Um, and um, Joe Burrow coming off of his second season-ending injury, you gotta got to protect him, and I think J.C. Latham is somebody who can do that. I think he, like we mentioned earlier, he very well, could be the second best tackle in this class. And to get him at 18, I think is a phenomenal value. Um, I really like what he brings. I think he's only allowed like three sacks his entire career, something like that. Um, and, and we just have to hope and pray that um, this off- this Alabama offensive tackle pans out better than the last one. Uh, and that's what I said when you brought it up a couple nights ago. I was like, yeah, because drafting tackles – from Alabama always works out from the Bengals. Yeah. Well, the Bengals don't have a great track record drafting, drafting offensive line in general. No, they don't. No. No. Not at all. That, it, you have to go back to Andre Whitworth to do Andrew that. Andre Whitworth? That's, you know what I meant. Yeah, I'm tired. That's fair. I'm sorry. Um, Thanks for correcting me, nah, Nate. No, you're good. I think I have so the Rams at nineteen. Nick, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, this is Nick. Um, I every single pick that I've had has been exactly how I had it in my mock draft, and it's not going to change. I think this is where Coop DeGene gets drafted. Um, really? Yes. Hmm. I think that interesting. The 40, I, not the Forty ers The Rams need. Um, it's a bit weird to how they were when they won the Super Bowl where they had still had Jalen Ramsey, and their defense is really good, but it was like, can the offense pull their weight? I think their offense is obviously, like, the strength of that team now with um, Matthew Stafford, Puka Nakua, uh, Cooper Cup still, uh, Kyron Williams in the backfield. Uh, I think their their defense, particularly their corners, were not great either. Um, and I think that the Rams kind of need a guy that can play anywhere in the backfield. I, ca- I talked about Coupe DeGene. Um, when I went over the Colts briefly, but I think that they could really use a guy that can kind of just play anywhere. They were 20, they were 20th overall in defensive rating last year. 
and they were 20th as well in passing defense. Um, so I think they need a guy that can play anywhere in the in the secondary. I think Coop Dejean is that guy. So I think that's where they take him. That's an interesting one for me. I I think this is a right around the range where you start potentially getting Cooper DeGene, but I think he goes personally I think he goes a little bit later. Um and I talked with Evan about this the other day where I think he will end up because of that versatility that you talked about and how he can play anywhere in the secondary. Um but I mean I I I'm not complaining about the pick. I think it's a good pick. He he's a freak athlete. So, like we he's said, we dog continue. At corner, he is a dog. He is a dog. Yeah, Evan knows. Cool. Evan knows where I had him. Yeah, I had him on the same spot. But I mean, the the um the Rams could use some corner help. That um they hit on who was the guy that they drafted last year who was good. Kobe yeah. Turner, yeah. They hit on him, and, I mean, getting Coop Desheen, who, I mean, Nick mentioned, can play inside. He can play nickel. He can play safety. Athletic freak. He's a great tackler. Um, I think you really can't go wrong with him. Um, no, He's no, aggressive. I like yeah. him. So, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hate the pick. Nope, not at all. Do I have the Steelers at 20? Yeah. Yes. All right. Steelers at twenty. Well, they need. They could use secondary, but looking at who's on the available, it's getting a little thinner. I I like a guy, a certain guy. At this there's point. yeah, there's still there's still great players. Don't get me wrong, and I might pull the trigger on one of them. Um, but I'm. I think I might go an unconventional route. I'm going to have them drafting Jackson Powers Johnson. That's who I was yeah. going to say. Um, the main reason being they just released their starting center, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Mason um, Cole. Yeah. And I still think they need help on that offensive line. Um, they drafted... Who was the tackle Roger they drafted? Jones. Roger Jones. Um, so they got a, they got a couple guys in there, but I think offensive line still in need. And like Nick mentioned, take out positional value, Jackson Powers Johnson very well could be the best offensive Offensive lineman lineman in this draft. And I think getting in the 20 is great value. And I think it fits in need. I think it's a good pick. I like it. I like it. (laughs) And that's scary because, you know, Jack, the Steelers. Same division as Bengals. Having great drafts is kind of scary. <laughs> right. uh, is I, yeah, this is me. Um, hmm. I think I go. Can you go to tackle for me? I think one of the most important things for them this year is big time protecting. Um, Tua and I think this is best with Troy Fautuanu I can't even say his name can somebody help me out I think it's like Fautuanu Fautuanu Troy Fautuanu from Washington I think this is where I think this is where he goes Um, continue just to solidify try to solidify the offensive line protect Tua and ultimately make an impact on the offensive line, which is a position or in particular, one of their big needs this off season. Mm-hmm. He also could move into guard, um, which they're losing. I think Robert Hunt is free agent. So if they have yeah. team, he could slide in the guard position. So. The only other position I probably would have gone there was, um, edge. Yeah. Cause there's one guy who's slipped a little bit. And, and I think I yeah, I know who you're talking about. But Joey uh, the Eagles pick too, right? Yes, I am. And I think one of the biggest needs that they need to address is at in the secondary. I think this is their biggest issue. Um let's see. 
Hmm. Hmm. This is a toughie. Um. Do I think Kool Aid McKintry could go here? Yeah. But I think I might look elsewhere here, and I might go with Mr. Ennis Rackstraw Jr. from Mizzou. Mizzou. He's a big play guy. Um, he has that big play ability to ultimately be a big playmaker, and they need somebody that can do that and also brings that grit to the team too. Um, I think this is a pick that I think it, I'd go either him or Kool Aid personally. I think, but I'm gonna throw a little wrench in there. I'm gonna spice it up a little bit. I think uh, Big Straw definitely can sneak into that first round, depending on how he tests. And um, I mean, he was pretty good in the zoo too. Yeah. And they have a huge need at secondary. So. It, it's it's by far their biggest need. Yeah, it, it was really bad. You want do? Should I tell them? Should I tell you all what I did? Who? Um. So by this point, I had Kool Aid off the board. I had Pittsburgh drafting Kool Aid because huh. I think ja- Jackson Powers Johnson was gone because he was he at Seattle for me. Um. I went best player available, and I took Liatu Latu. <laughs> Imagine Jeez, that big... pass rush with I him there. From seven moves. Just I went move. best player available at that point. I honestly think Latu Latu or Lae Latu is this is right around the range I would take him. Personally. I think we're starting to get I I mean it's like fifteen to in this range for me. But yeah. Evan, yeah. Mm. One quick check. Oh. You could do something really fun here, Evan. (laughs) Something something really fun here? I either do something really fun or something boring. We always go fun. What would yeah, you, you know do? What, what would I do? <laughs> That's what this draft is about. Um, what I would do. Screw it. I'll do the fun route. I'll go. Where is it? Brian Thomas Jr. That's what you like to uh, hear. Uh. Um, so then you have a receiving core of Nico Collins, Tank Dell, and Brian Thomas Jr. with CJ Stroud. <laughs> um, I think it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, I mean Brian Thomas Jr. He is he was alongside obviously Malik Neighbors at LSU. Um, and he. He's a bigger guy, 6'4", 205, um, great possession receiver. Um, he's a great red zone target, obviously, at 6'4". Um, I think he would kind of just add to the weapons that they already have. So I think they could have gone deep into tackle. I think they could have, could have gone Newton here. But we'll do a splash pick, Ryan Thomas Jr. <laughs> Nice. I like it. If you think about it, you get him, Tank Dell, and Nico. That's that could, gross. That, that's gross that for one. It's competing, with, it's competing for a top. shaking in his boots. With the secondary it's competing we for have? A top, it's competing for a top trio in the league. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Easy. Uh, this is assuming that they, the Texans don't get Saquon, too. Which he, Which, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard that that's that that. very well might happen. That would be so fun. That would not be fun. That would be terrible. That'd be awful. I'd hate hey, it. Hey, just get him out of New York. I don't care. That's fair. Right, Nick. Nick with Dallas. Um, 
Dallas and Green Bay. Yeah, Dallas and Green Bay. Um, I'm so glad that you went again. the fun route, Evan, because this makes my pick a whole lot easier. Um, the Cowboys' run defense wasn't great, so I'm going to take Jerjon Newton to fix it. Um, nice. Great interior D lineman, fantastic run stopper. Um, 6'2, 300 pounds. Um, I think he'll kind of fix the hole in the middle of that defensive line. Um, not including Micah Parsons because he kind of plays edge sometimes. Micah Parsons is also a great run defender. He's just a great linebacker, period. But in terms of interior defensive line, I think they need a little bit of help. Um, so I think they'll go that route. And then for Green Bay, um, this guy was off my board previously, but he's still here, and I think he has tremendous upside. Um, and I think you got to protect your franchise guy, potentially, Jordan Love. And I think you draft Amarius Mims here. Um, a little bit hampered by injury this past year, but uh, when he did play, he was phenomenal. He was potentially a top 10 pick before this season, and then injuries happen, he didn't play that much. Um, but if he lives up, if he can stay healthy and live up to his potential in Green Bay, oh boy, uh, Jordan Love is going to have a clean pocket a lot of the time. Because this man is six foot seven, 340 pounds. He's, that is a massive... That's, that's kind of a big man. That's a massive man. It's like I said with Joe Alt earlier, that is a mammoth of a human being. Um. <laughs> Yeah. He will be a fantastic run blocker, pass blocker. He'll do whatever you need to do. Um, so I think it's – I think I had him going to Miami, I think, in my previous draft. Um, and then I had the Packers going D-line here because um, I think I had Byron going Murphy. Going away from offense yeah, again. Byron Murphy and Jerzon Newton still on the board at this point. Um, but Mary Smith was still here. I love him as a tackle prospect in this draft. Um, so I think that's where they go. In this scenario, you, you said Byron Murphy wasn't enough. Yeah, he just, I don't know why he fell as far as he did, but he just did. I had Dallas taking Byron Murphy and then Green Bay taking huh. John Newton. I could see him falling a little bit for sure because it's not really a positional, you know, like a position a, of need per se. Position of, not even position of need, but like similar to how you would view so like a tight end or a running back, it's not as valued so in the league. Yeah. That's what I meant. So I don't. I think, I, and I, I, the, I like it. But yeah. I, I was. I think the just Packers just, could also go with like uh, with this board. I think Kool Aid could definitely be a guy that they go with. And they help that secondary out. It's, we talked about it, Joel. Um, that secondary might go a little thin. Yeah, yeah, pretty thin. But, but I said in that video, I had them also. Um, I had them looking into Graham Martin from Duke. Um, yes. Yeah, Mims is on the board. Plus, with Bakhtiari you know, probably retiring either this year or next year. All right, now I'm up at the Bucks. Yeah. Correct. The Bucks. I think this is where Leotu Latu goes. Um, I think Shaquille Barrett is a free agent. Yeah, he got, he got cut. cut today. He got cut. Yeah. Um, and I think Leao yeah, Tulatu is just too good of a player to still be there. Um, I'll pull up what he he also tested today, and he he again did pretty well. Um, but I think playing him with. Um, what's his name? Um, why am I blanking on his name? Vita Vea. Vita, yeah. Kind of beef up that defensive line. Uh, but yeah, Leatu ran a, f he ran a four, was it four, six, four, 32 inch vertical. And he got a 9.19 combine score. So, dude's a freak. Super smooth movements. Um, if you saw in, in the drills they did today, he just looked like very smooth. Um, the only issue with him is he did have a neck injury a couple years ago. 
which I think is in the some people's minds. But um, I mean, he showed out the combine today. Todd Bowles likes his defense, obviously. To the two. I like it. Finally, see him come off the board. It makes sense, especially with what happened with uh, Shaq Barry. So, good pick. Cardinal second. Uh, one of two ways I think this one can go. Um, you definitely could see. Um, uh, why am I blanking? D line edge help. Um, but I'm going to go a different route and I'm going to take Kool-Aid McKinstry. Um, Kool-Aid. I'm going to go Kool-Aid. They really don't have a clear cut guy as their number one. And I feel, um, Kool-Aid McKinstry has the intangibles to make that happen. Um, he's an explosive player, uh, explosive player, well-sized. Um, he can play all across. He's great in run defense. Um, he's very active. And one of the big things that I like about him is his physicality. He smothers guys at the point of attack. Um, and getting their guy potentially to be their CB1, it just makes sense for Kool-Aid McKinstry to come off the board here. Yeah, I really like Kool-Aid. Um, to get him at 27, I think it's pretty good. You leave this draft with Marr and Kool-Aid. Yeah, pretty good first round. Definitely. Um, oh, and now 28. Um, I got two guys in mind right now. One on the offensive side of the ball and one on the defensive side of the ball. Now, let me pull this guy up just to make sure I'm not being stupid. Um, if you guys want to keep talking about something, go ahead. Um, I think the bill should look at my Yeah, we talked about it after they lost to the Chiefs. Where the Bills, like, is Gabe Davis really that guy? And um, thinks he is. That's where I was going. I'm going to go wide receiver. I'm just between two guys. And is he actually going to be like the fifth round pick? Or is PFF tripping? I think PFF's tripping. I think it's tripping. Give me Mitchell. A.D. Mitchell. He had some pretty big games this year. Especially um, if you remember back to the Alabama game, he played pretty pretty dang solid in that one. Um, and like you said, they need a guy to compliment Stephon Diggs. Obviously, Gabe Davis wasn't getting it done. Um, the other guy I considered there was Keon Coleman. Um, those were the two I was between. And I'm going to just lean towards Mitchell in this case. What I said um, right after the Bills lost, I said, I said they need a receiver who you can throw the ball to, and he's going to make a play. And that's, I think, Keon Coleman and A.D. Mitchell both do that great. Um, and they both do other things well as well. But I think A.D. Mitchell is a, a great player. I think he could do really well on the Josh, Josh Allen. Ran off. Hook him horns, baby. Right, Nick, you have the Lions? I think you, nope, you, you have the Lions. I have the Lions. Dude, who did I have them going in our? Uh, I had them going Kool Aid. Yeah, it was Kool Aid. It was Kool Aid. You have. Who did you have? Who did I have them taking? Yeah. Um, I had them taking. You're going. You're going Newton. Newton. Newton right? I had them going Newton. They're both going. Mm-hmm. You could. You could. There's a guy that you could potentially do here. Yeah, I think I might. I'm going to go Graham Barton. Yep, exactly. Which 
like if you watched our Detroit Lions offensive breakdown video, which you should go check that out. It was a good one. Um, we talked about the two two big free agents, so their left and right guard, uh, Jonah Jackson and Graham Glasgow. And if by some reason they can't bring both of them back, I don't think bring one of them back. You got Graham Barton, who yes, who played tackle last year, but he also played uh, guard and center as well for Duke. So you can easily slide him into guard. Um, and kind of just beef up that already great um, offensive line. Um, and yeah, I think with majority of the great corners off the board, um, I think this is one of the one I think just makes sense. I think the biggest need, like we talked about, is secondary. But with the way the board's fallen, I think you got to go with Graham Martin. The way that- the way this board has fallen, this is a layup. Yeah. All right. Nicholas. Nick, you got blessed. You got the, the Ravens, Ravens and the Niners. Back to Niners. back. Um, with the Ravens, when I did mine, I think, yeah, yeah, I also had them going receiver. Um, I think I had them taking A.D. Mitchell uh, for that reason, but he's off the board. I also think they need a guy that Lamar Jackson can just throw it up to and someone can come down and get it. Um, and for me, the best 50-50 receiver left is Keon Coleman. So I'm going to take Keon mm-hmm. Coleman here at 30. Um, it was between him and Troy Franklin for me in terms of big receivers that can kind of win 50-50 balls. Uh, I think Keon Coleman did it with a worse quarterback. Um, so I'm going to go with him in this scenario. Um, I think he's a great player. At points this year, he was projected to be a top 15 pick. Um, he kind of had a not subpar second half of the year, but he fell off a little bit. But he's still a fantastic player. Had a great season for Florida State. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on the 49ers side of the ball, um, this is kind of my, my sleeper pick. I think that... Um, I mean, their defense is already loaded. Their secondary was the one part that was not loaded last year. Um, and a guy that I love here is Kamari Lassiter for Georgia. Um, I think that he would be fantastic in this system. He was great for the Bulldogs. Um, I had him with the 49ers when I did mine. Um, and I'm going to stick with that here. So, Kamari Lassiter as my final pick in this first draft. Nice. Well, that makes my job easy. Fred Franklin to the Chiefs. Where do the Chiefs need wide receivers? Fred Franklin's the best one on the board. And, um, yeah, like like Nick said, he's another guy that is more, he can get a jump ball, but he's also, um, I think he's also very well rounded. And if you watched any of Oregon, he was just phenomenal. Um he's six two, one seventy. Um he's great in the middle of the field, um, in the boundaries. He's just a great overall receiver. I think getting the Chiefs, the Rich Get Richer, getting him a thirty two, great pick. Um, and I think he's only gonna help Patrick Mahomes. But obviously Patrick Mahomes can Work with subpar receivers, and now you have him, Rashid Rice, and so obviously they, Kelsey. Yeah, um, like I said, the rich get richer. But, yeah, so that's our mock draft 1.0. Um, obviously, the draft is until what April, so there's still <clears throat> a good probably two yeah, months. Yeah, about two months away right now. Yep, but. Yeah, that's our that's our mock draft. Give us but before a date. we do, have any what what do we think overall? I think we did pretty good. I think overall, I think overall we did pretty good. I think for the most part we addressed needs for teams. Um, like yeah, true needs for teams outside. I outside of the Brian Thomas pick, but I mean I think that's just too fun to pass up with <laughs> the way yeah, Houston's building pick. their team. Um. But yeah, I th- I think it's I think it's all right. I think we did good. The way this plays point. out, which is your, the way this draft plays out with this first round, I think. Uh, who who do you think's the clear cut winner? 
Uh, I think Chicago. Yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty easy. You get Roma Dunze and Caleb Williams in the first round, like, chef's kiss. Like, you can't, you surely can't screw that up if you have both of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. The only other one I would potentially say, I love um, Falcons getting Dallas Turner at eight. Mm-hmm. That- um, real quick, before we wrap up, um, I just want to touch real quick. Obviously, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the combine started today and it's going this weekend. So, um, it's kind of a not planned question. But uh, give me one guy that you guys are looking at in the comments that you expect to be like a big dance, or just someone you're really interested to see. Dance. Someone you're kind of keen on. Mm. I can go for it. Go for it. Um, I got two guys that I'm really looking at. First is, um, both my guys are on the offensive side, by the way. First is Braylon Allen. Um, I love Braylon Allen. He's only 20 years old. Um, he had a phenomenal year at um, Wisconsin, and I think if he can test well, which he should, um, I think that's going to raise his stock a lot. I think he could be definitely a day two guy um, and be a big piece to a team. He's gotten comparisons to guys like Derrick Henry because he's a huge guy, but he has great speed. And so I think if he can really knock the 40 out of the park um, and then obviously do well in the other agility drills, I think – that's going to just up his draft stock a lot. I really love that as a prospect. And another guy um, is wide receiver from Western Kentucky, Malachi Corley. Um, I watched him play because Western Michigan, or not Western Michigan, Western Kentucky was in um, Liberty's Conference, so I saw him play firsthand. Um, and he's phenomenal. He had one game, I think, where he had like 300 yards and like three touchdowns or something. Some crazy stat one time. But I think he's a super. He's super athletic. He's a big guy. I think he could definitely help a team. Um, I saw somebody said he could be like Debo Samuel, which it might be a stretch. But um, I really like him as a prospect, and I think a team getting him day two could definitely help. If you need a receiver, I think he could definitely help um, there in those day two. I think he could. I don't know if, if he's projected second or third round, but I think if he isn't a second rounder, I think if he tests well, he definitely could be a second. Rounder. So those are two guys that I'm kind of coming up. You guys have anything? Um, for me, I think the big thing going into today was whether Dallas Turner confirmed his potential or not. And like you touched on, he he knocked it out of the park. Um, for me, one of the big guys that I'm looking at for this draft is let me think. Um, I think Chop Robinson is a big question mark because mm-hmm. he was also. Um, looked at as potential a first round pick, but then he got injured later on in this year. So I'd be I'll be watching him out for for what he does. He tested crazy today. Oh yeah, he already oh, went. Yeah. yeah, I it's been a long day for me. I haven't really had a chance to tune into the combine and see how how people did. Um, so when you were talking about the uh, stats that Dallas started talking about, I was like, I need I need to watch that. I'm probably going to do that after I leave here. Yeah. Um, so I don't have well a, chopper in a chopper in a four four nine four yeah. So at two fifty four, yeah, that's that's pretty that's answer. pretty good for a guy of his size. Yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, I think that um those are a couple guys that I was kind of key key in on. Um, and I mean I was interested to see how Quinn Mitchell did as well today because I I mean I love him as a prospect. Um, so those are my guys that I would. Be, I would have looked into. Hmm. One of my big ones. One of my big ones is going to be JJ McCarthy. I'm interested to see how he's going to test. Um, and actually throw the ball. Yeah. So that's one of the big things that people hinder him on. I want to see, you know. Okay, what's going to take place? Is he going to be able to do it, Um, for one? The other one I'm kind of interested to see how he does is Lad McConkie. I'm interested to see how that's going to go for him. Um, We've seen um, 
what he's been capable of at Georgia over these, especially this year. For one, um, when I was watching him this year, um, I'm interested to see if he can actually make it into the first round. Uh, he's pretty close, but I'm, I'd be interested to see if he can boost his stock enough to get into that first round. He had a great senior bowl, so it's definitely got some momentum going. Yeah, <clears throat> for sure. But yeah, yeah big, gonna... big one is JJ. I'm interested to see yeah. what happens there. Yeah. See him actually throw the ball. What about Spencer Rattler, guys? I read something today that somebody, like a lot of scouts, have Spencer Rattler rated higher than Bo Nix and Michael Penix, which I find absurd. That's absurd. But. I'm not a scout. So what he was I? a senior bowl MVP. Yeah, but he also kind of sucked in college. I I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> there was so much hype around this dude. Dude was projected at one point to be a the first top overall five pick. pick. When he was first just overall, starting in yeah. Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. But didn't pan out. But yeah, the senior bowl MVP definitely salvaged some of his draft stock, but well, did you see the quarterbacks that are throwing and the ones that aren't? Yeah, who's not doing? Caleb and Drake? Caleb, Drake, and May, Jayden. and Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Then from there, it's J.J., Michael Penix, Bo Nix, Rattler, all throwing. Yeah. yeah. Those are the guys that really need to throw. Yeah, that's fair. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. If, if you enjoyed it, should have given it like and subscribe and we're going to be doing hopefully two more mock drafts before the draft starts so this is our 1.0 we'll see how it aged um come draft time but also make sure to check out all of our off-season breakdown videos that we're going to be posting throughout the off-season um we put out uh, the lions and packers have already been posting the vikings one should be up here in a day or two um, so make sure you go check those out to kind of get a more in-depth of kind of what we're talking about with the draft baby and all that. So, yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a great day. Peace.